Hey, welcome to the Robert Show. We are here at AWS reInvent, and it's day four. Look who I have with me: Reed Maloney, CMO, Dremio uh, Maloney. Uh, I can call you Maloney as well, right? Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> totally. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Reed, uh, it's such a pleasure to have you here. I know we've chatted so many times, but finally, good to have you on the show. You're looking well, forward. Thanks so much for having me. Yeah, looking forward to learning more about uh, a lot of things that's happening at Dremio. I know there have been a few announcements this week as well. Uh, we'll dig more into it, but just for our audience who uh, want to learn a little about you, can you introduce yourself? Yeah, I'm, I'm Reed, CMO at Dremio. You yeah. already got that right. Yeah. I've been here uh, a little over a year and I spent the last 15 years in technology marketing. Uh, I was actually, my start coming out of business school uh, was with AWS. Oh, wow. So I have was here for the first reInvent. I can't even tell you how many reInvents I've been to. <laughs> and it's sort of amazing to watch the growth over at the, you know, just the ecosystem to develop in the cloud. Right. It's been really right. exciting. So yeah, a lot of energy this year, really packed house. Yeah. Romeo's getting a ton of attention, which of course we think is warranted. So yes, 100%. Uh, that's been great, yeah. No, I've been seeing obviously uh, in the last three days, I might have passed like quite a few times from Dremio and it's jam packed. Uh, I'm pretty sure you all are sharing something very interesting with the audience and that's one of the re you know reasons all the enterprise leaders also kind of want to learn more and more about Dremio. But I know you recently came up with uh, uh, you know new features around Gen AI as well and that's one of the topics that you know uh, everyone wants to learn more about like it's maturing it's getting there it's like almost 12 months we've seen you know yeah. open ai come up yeah. with uh, chat gpt as well so how are you looking at it can you share more about it well i mean being around the show floor obviously gen ai is yeah. at yeah some unbelievable amount of hype cycle yeah and I, I can't i can't even look around and find something that's just not talking about ai this ai that 100 and, and all of that's meaningless until you actually do something that impacts the customer yeah and so one thing that's really foundational at dremio is that we're really focused on self-service mm -hmm. we really have this concept of how far left in an organization can we push the business towards the source of the data? Yeah. So instead of just interacting on the client, how can they go and start building their own views? How can they go and be more involved in their data models? How can they do more yeah. without needing the engineering teams? Yeah. And so this is part of the reason where like our query engine, the engineers can go build a materialization or summarization of the data, yeah. while the business is off just creating views and querying the views. Yeah. And our, our query engine's smart enough to go and say, oh, there's this materialization there, so I can go speed it up. Yeah. Which is required if you want to have self-service, because if not, things slow down and you're back to a centralized data engineering team. Exactly. And, and I'm not saying like, you're not, not going to still have data engineers, but you want to start pushing that towards self-service. That's where Gen AI comes in for us. Yeah. So one of the last announcements I, we did, and this was um, uh, at least three months ago, maybe more than that, we yeah. did text to SQL. Okay. So you know, we have a really intuitive UI to go build these views, mm -hmm. and you don't need code to go do that, and then you would typically write SQL against the view, so you're just creating the data you need and you're, and you're querying it. Yeah. So that's cool. Yeah. But then you're like, okay, now I can just talk, it'll write the query, you could adjust it if you want, yeah. and then you're going to query the view that you need. Now what we've brought in is we're able to really improve discovery by helping to create wikis automatically using Gen AI. Oh, wow. So it's the data comes in, mm -hmm. the sources, instead of it, you having to take all this time to go and figure out, well, how do we want to define that data, put business terms around it, make it available out to the business, we're using True. Gen AI to do that. True. So True. it's super cool, it's just another step in our path to self-service, to making sure organizations can really shift towards the business, being a, being a closer to the data in terms of you know, yeah. getting insights faster. Yeah. yeah, no, I love it, and uh, thanks for sharing those insights, and also uh, in terms of, uh, you know, I always hear from a lot of data leaders as well, where they kind of want to learn more about how will it help us as customers? Have, do you have any success stories with the customers? Do you want to share something around the same lines? Yeah, I mean, we, we have a lot of, I mean, we have a lot of success stories with customers and, and the way we think about what I talked about in terms of shifting left yeah. is around how are we going to reduce that mean time to insight? Mm -hmm. You know, if, if you don't do that, you're still waiting, you're bottlenecked. Yeah. And so, I'll use an Amazon example because we're here. So. While we're at AWS, Amazon, and particularly their supply chain group, is a customer of Dremio. And yeah. so they were able to speed up their ability to go from, hey, I got this project to find that we want to get a new insight on, 
that was taking them really weeks to even months, right. down to days. And on average, their projects say eight to 10 times less time. Oh. Eight to 10 times less time. Less time, yeah, exactly. By it's using huge. a tool like Dremio, because again, they're not waiting and sitting in queues for specialized resources to make really basic changes, like mm. a calculated column or something like that yeah. in their data. They can just go. And so it's True. having a really profound impact. No, I love it. And uh, in terms of uh, the future as well, what do you think, uh, where, where does Dremio think about the Gen AI future? What are you uh, yeah. planning for? So, so, so I see, I see two things, and they're not necessarily Gen AI related, uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, but Gen AI could, especially in the second part, have a relatively large, um, large uh, impact. Yep. But one of the trends is still the adoption of Apache Iceberg. Um, we recently did a survey, and I know we'll talk a little bit about this. It's yep. the State of the Data Lakehouse survey and we looked at what is current adoption and what is future adoption, and we've been talking to a lot of mm -hmm. leaders here and, uh, and customers here as well, and what we've seen is while Delta Lake was out in the market and is, has some more adoption than Iceberg now, yeah. if you look at planned adoption, it is way tilted to Apache Iceberg, yeah. and why we like that is not because you know we've we've invested in it, which we have, we like it, we invested in it because we felt like it was going to be the open format for interoperability, exactly. yeah. for customer choice, for flexibility. Wow. And so for us, it all comes back to the customer and they want choice and they want to own their own data and we think uh, Iceberg's format for that. So I think we're going to see a lot more, mm -hmm. a lot, like, there's already a bunch of noise, I think we're going to see way more noise and yeah. sort of it start to really take over as the open standard yep. in 2024. That's prediction number one. Prediction number one, okay. yes. Prediction number two is that we're, we're really going to now see these development best practices mm -hmm. in terms of code yep. make their way into data. Okay. The concept of like data uptime and data downtime, downtime. I think is really going to come in. That's related to data observability, which is part of data operations. Yep. Um, and we're really happy about that because one of the things that, that we give to the market is get inspired data versioning. Mm -hmm. So we have a way to actually version the data to make it really, you can branch as you're bringing data in, make sure it looks good, yep. high quality, before you merge it back into the main. Yep. So you have all these ways to ensure quality better as you have that, and if something goes wrong, you can pinpoint where it went wrong in the Makes process. Sense. So you're yeah. not spending all this time. Yeah. So that's just extra extra complexity and cost is taking the engineers away from what they really want to do, yeah. which is much more higher value projects and basically just you know shoveling all day long. <laughs> right? Saves a lot of time as well, right? Totally. If we yeah. can make the analysts happy but self-service, we're going to make the engineers happy, happy because we've truncated all the sequencing and ETL steps and all that. So yeah. I see this whole trend on, on data ops and bringing development is going to be big in 2024. Love it. Can't, see, can't wait for 2024. You also mentioned about the state of uh, the Lake yeah. House report, right? Yeah. And it just got released, so we released uh, two it days on back. So yes. we, we did we did a third party one out and we interviewed 500 customers about oh my what God. do they know wow. about a Lake House, where they are in adoption, what table formats have been adopted, which I alluded yeah. to, yeah. You know which ones are growing the fastest for planned adoption. Yeah. And we also have a lot in there on data mesh and AI. Oh. So we have four basically main areas we cover. You can go download the reports, totally free. It's really interesting. Awesome, yeah. And then we have an event on December 12th. So you oh. want to go check that out. We have uh, one of our customers, which, which is uh, Maersk, is going to be there with our CEO sender. Okay. We have Mike Ferguson, an analyst, is going to be there. We're going to have a discussion about 2024 trends and predictions. So oh, they'll wow. be able to apply their own about what's coming in. Awesome. But one really interesting note is that within three years, over 70% of companies expect that the Lake House will be the primary platform they're using for analytics. Oh, wow. So that's from 70%, the- 70%, yeah. Exactly, that's from the report results that you've seen. That's from the, that's from the report. The other interesting thing is 42% of the data that's coming into Lake Houses, yep. which is the leading source, is coming from cloud data warehouses. Oh my God. Which is a sign wow. of, of the cost the cost challenge. Challenge, that right. That we help to solve as Dremio and that Lake Houses generally help to solve yeah. overall. Yeah, exactly.
Okay, this is great. Uh, Reid, I can't wait and uh, definitely I'll be sharing the links with our audience for the report and for the event as well. They can attend virtually too. Absolutely, yeah. It's vir it, it is only virtually. Okay, there. awesome. So that's uh, that's course, even that's better. Free, freedom yeah. Tent, yeah. Okay, awesome. Guys, I'll share the link with you all. But Reid, this was such a pleasure and uh, it's always uh, fun chatting with you. You have such great insights, not only just about what's happening right now, but also about the future. So, very excited about 2024, and I know Subsurface is coming very soon. Oh, well, yeah, it's going to be in May. In May. So, yeah. we can't wait Save for that. Save the dates as well. already out. Yes. Thanks, awesome. Robert. Thanks yeah, very it was much. A it's such a pleasure. Yeah. yeah. Thank you.